Hey folks, Rob Terrio. What I want to do is give you a little tutorial on how to create a quiz within a PowerPoint. So this is great if you don't have the luxury of having a student response system, a uh, system where you've got students holding clickers and they choose the correct answer on the board. So this is just a, a down and dirty quick way of uh, creating quiz in PowerPoint, which makes your lessons a little more entertaining a little more engaging and what I like to do is about every 10 slides or so put in about five quiz questions multiple choice questions it just keeps the students engaged and there's no way of tracking um, how they responded how individuals responded using the system but it just makes the presentation a little bit more fun so what I want to do is create a template quiz. So I'm not going to put the quiz in an existing PowerPoint presentation just yet. I want to create a template so that I've got that and then I can take that template and embed it in any existing PowerPoint presentation. So I take a standard slide format. Now I'm going to do a couple of things to it. I'm not crazy about the black text and uh, the background you can change as well, but I'm going to take this title slide. I'm going to uh, move it over to the left because that's going to be my quiz question. I'm going to change the font size to a 36 and I'm going to change, actually I'm going to change that to a 28 rather and that might seem a little small but it's just about the minimum size you want. Under the text I'm going to change that to a 28 as well. Uh, if I hit control A I capture all of those and I prefer a different font color so I'm just going to pick, uh, uh, I like this particular blue, don't ask me why but I like that blue. Uh, anyway so now what I'm going to do is this will be my template question so all I'm going to do here is put Q dot one colon blah 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 that's all I'm going to do remember this is a template now under text I'm going to eliminate the bullet point and make sure it's lined up and uh, I'm going to create template answers so it's going to be blah and I'm going to make it two lines just in case my answers happen to be two lines in length now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this like so I'm going to shrink it over to this direction here to about that line and I'm going to drag it over here so that I've got almost the entire space there. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit, maybe to the line or so, right there like that. And I'm going to create duplicates of this because I want to create a multiple choice question that has A, B, C, and D. So in order to do that, I'm going to use Control D. D is in Delta. So when I do that, this is what happens. I'm going to line it up so that it's exactly in line and then I'm going to slide it down so that it's spaced just about nicely. So this will be question B or answer B rather and then I'm going to hit control D again and control D uh, another time and now I've got A, B, C and D. Now that might look strange but um, stick with me and you'll see what will happen. So now I'm going to create uh, action boxes uh, that will be our choices A, B, C, D. And you have uh, one option is to go to these different shapes here. And at the very bottom it says action buttons. So what that means is that when you select one of these buttons it will hyperlink to either another page or a sound or whatever you want. And I'm just going to choose one on the far right here called, uh, it's just a blank action box. And then it asks me to draw it. So I'm going to click with my left mouse and drag it to about this size, we'll say. I want it uh, pretty square. There we go. And an action settings window pops up. Now it defaults to none, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to play. And what I want these letters to play is a sound that indicates that they have selected the wrong answer. And I'll explain the method to my math madness in a minute. So um, the sound selection here is not fantastic, I have to tell you that. So I'm going to slide down. Bomb is one choice. I am going to pick. Uh, I'm going to pick hammer. Maybe that sounds strange, but I'm going to pick hammer. Uh, and I'm going to slide this close to the answer there, like so. So it's roughly in the middle. And let's just have a listen to see what it sounds like. So when I click on it, there we go, hammer. <laughs> sounds a little bit tinny. And uh, then I am going to right click on it and edit the text. And I'm going to put the letter A in there. Now that's pretty small. So I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to bump that up to about a 36 and I'm going to bold it. And there we go. So that's answer A. Now I'm going to highlight it again 
and hit Control D, line it up. And if you want to move um, an object in small increments instead of large increments like this, what you do is you hit Control and then the arrow. So here are the large increments. Hit the Control and you move it in smaller incre increments. So I'm going to move it in small increments so that it's lined up. Uh, let's see, that's about right. And then I'm going to slide it down to what would be answer B. And then I'm going to hit Control D again and Control D. Perfect. So it ends up in perfect alignment. Now I'm going to go in and edit this. I'm going to change this to B and this one to C and this one to D. And then if we go into show mode again, each one of these will be a hammer sound. So in other words, these are all the wrong answer. Now that might seem a little odd, but again, here's the method to my madness. Um, We've got a template question, and if I go to Slide Sorter, um, I can create a series of, let's say, five template questions. We'll do that now just for fun. So I'm going to hit Copy, and then I'm going to put my cursor there, and I'm going to hit Paste. So now I've got five questions, and this is one. I'm going to change this to two, this one to three, this one to four and obviously the next one to five. And so now I've got five template questions. Now at this point, in fact, you're ready to take these five questions, go to, to uh, slide sorter mode, and paste them into an existing PowerPoint presentation. Uh, and I'll show you what we would do when we do that. So I'll click on this one, hold down the shift key, and click on the last one, and then I hit copy or control C works for copy as well. And then I'm ready to go into an existing uh, PowerPoint presentation and just paste it in there in the slide sorter mode. Um, so we'll just pr pretend we've done that. Let's just go back to our first slide here. Now, what I want to do is if I actually, uh, let's say we've got this embedded in an existing PowerPoint presentation, I want to create this, make this a, a real question. I can type in um, what, is the best color and I'm giving it the uh, the Canadian spelling of color uh, now that's a ridiculous question but um, A will be red uh, B will be blue C will be yellow and D will be green Good. Now you'll see that these answers are a little out of alignment, so you can adjust those if you want. Just slide it down like so, and uh, I can shrink that a little bit. And I can do the same with uh, each one. Not a problem to do at all. So we just adjust that, and we'll do the same here. And we'll do the same there. So I have an actual question, uh, and now what I want to do is I want to have an answer slide. So what I will do is I'll go back into slide sorter mode. I'm going to take this first question. I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to move my cursor right next to it. I'm going to hit paste. Uh, so now I'm going to go back to the first page. And remember that each one of these is wrong, right? What I want to do is change uh, one of these to the correct answer. So we'll say, um, I like green, so I'm going to say green is the best color. It's, again, a ridiculous question, but I'm just showing this to you for as an example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the letter D. I'm going to right-click on it. Uh, I'm going to, whoops, I don't want to do that. I want to uh, click, just click on it and go to Insert, and I want to click on Action. And under action, I'm going to take off the hammer sound and I'm going to click on hyperlink to next slide. So the next slide is going to be the answer. So click OK. And then I'm going to go to the next slide, which looks identical. And I'm going to take this answer here. And I can do one of two things. I can go to home page and I can uh, fill this with a yellow color. Uh, and that indicates that's the right answer. Or let me undo that. Or I can take this letter 
and change its fill to, I don't know, um, black or yellow, although the letter disappears when I do that, black. Uh, anyway, I prefer the, the original idea, so let's just go back to that being yellow. Now, so what I need to do, uh, so let me go back to my first slide. So uh, we go into our show mode, and this is the wrong answer, wrong, wrong. And when I click on this one, it'll link us to the next slide that shows us the correct answer. So yay, there's the correct answer. But that's not terribly exciting, so let's hit escape. And what I want to do is I want to create a sound in this slide that comes up automatically. And in order to do that, what I do is I click Insert again. I go to Audio, and this time under Audio, I'm going to click uh, Clip Art Audio. And so a list of audio will come up, and one of the first ones you see is Clap Cheers. So I'm going to hit Clap Cheers and insert it. Then I'm going to close this box. Now, um, what you can do is you can click and drag this off of the screen. That's what I do, so that it's not visible. And uh, in fact, I don't think it's visible anyway, but uh, I'm uh, old school PowerPoint, so I drag it off the screen. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I want it to play automatically when that slide comes up. So up at the top under Audio Tools, I'm going to go to Playback. And here it says Start Sound on Click. Well, I don't want to have to click on that to play the sound. I want it to come up automatically. So I go to the drag down list and I click on automatically. And now we're set. Now watch what happens. We go back to the first slide. And we're going to go into show mode. Uh, and again, uh, you know, I'm going to ask the students, what's the best color? And of course, they're all going to choose green and we're going to go straight to the right answer. But, you know, maybe they'll raise their hands and 80% will say red, uh, so we click on those. Now when we hyperlink to the next page, not only is it going to show us the right answer, but it's going to play that sound. So are you ready for it? Here it comes. Yay! I love that. <laughs> and as simple as it seems, the students love this stuff. It's absolutely crazy. So now we've created a question, and you can do the same with each and every one. So I've taken this template question one and I've duplicated it and uh, changed the link on one of these A, B, C, or D to hyperlink to the next page and, and then I've added a sound to that page. So I can do the same with question two, question three, question four. Uh, and, I, and I do that after I've embedded my template into an existing PowerPoint presentation. So that's it for PowerPoint quizzes. It's a lot of fun, makes your PowerPoints a lot more engaging, and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial.